As the Deputy Inspector General of Royal Malaysia Police in his press conference has claimed the false allegation yesterday, I am going to disclose Malaysia's unjust behaviors and contradictions of their suggestions through the interview after informing our stance in the meeting with the Dep Deputy Secretary General for Bilateral Affairs of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Malaysia upon their request this morning. At first, Malaysia police informed the embassy that a diplomatic passport holder of the DPRK fainted from the heart attack at the airport and that he died on the way to the hospital as it was a natural death. It has been seven days since the, since the incident, but there is no clear evidence on the cause of the death. And at the moment, we cannot trust the investigation by the Malaysian police, even though its result would be obtained. It only increase, increases the doubt that there would be someone else hand behind the investigation. It is also reported that Deputy Prime Minister and Home Minister of Malaysia spoke to the media that Malaysia would accept our request to release the body. But in the afternoon, on 17th February, the Deputy Inspector General of Royal Malaysia Police informed us in the meeting of the absurd allegation that they would never release his body without the presence of the next of, it, of kin to him for the identification and DNA test. The embassy has already identified his identity named Kim Chol, a DPRK citizen as mentioned in his passport. However, the Malaysian police has not yet ascertained the cause of his death and not offered the criminal evidence of the suspects. They rather focused on identifying the other name alleged, alleged by the hostile forces against the DPRK unlawfully requesting the presence of his next of kin for the identification and DNA test to delay the release of this body. This apparently shows that the investigation by the Malaysian police is not for the clarification of the cause of the death and such of the suspect, but it is out of the political aim. The deceased is not ordinary citizen, but the diplomatic passport holder who is under the diplomatic privileges, which means the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations should be abide by. The request for the DNA sample from the family of the deceased is a preposterous one. Where can we find out the precedent that the body of the deceased with clear citizenship is released after the DNA sample is provided? It is normal to test the DNA to identify the identification and the next, uh, next of kin of the deceased under the condition that the body was rotted, burnt or turned into skeleton. As long as the citizenship is clear, his identification is confirmed by the embassy, which is in charge of his consular rights and moreover, he's a diplomatic passport holder. Such request could be only regarded as a politically, political plot behind the incident. Under any circumstances, the Malaysian law cannot overwhelm the international laws. If the death of the DPRK citizen named Kim Chol is not a natural one and is murdered as alleged by the Malaysian side, the latter should be fully responsible for the murder of our citizen Malaysia. We have the right to request for the investigation result as the victim's side 
Particularly, there is an allegation that the arrested female suspects murdered him by poison needles by South Korean media or by dobbing chemicals in the face. We demand for the meeting with such female suspects to reveal the truth. And if it is true, what a contradiction that the dubbed person has died, but the person who dubbed is alive. In this connection, there are so many questions and contradictions on whether he is surely murdered by the female suspects or whether they are the fabricated suspects by the Malaysian police to hide the true cause of the death. Some people say that the suspects are instructed by someone else. We would like to hear from them directly to ensure by whom they were instructed. Up to date, we have been respecting the Malaysian police and waiting with patience for their fair and accurate investigation result. On the contrary, they pinned the suspicion on us and targeted the investigation against us. Now there are so many rumors spread to the public to defame the image of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. The Malaysian police should bear the full responsibility for that. The one who is beneficial from the incident is the South Korean authorities, who faces the largest ever political scandal. And at the same time, this is shown as the, as the attempt of the United States to force the third deployment in South Korea in cooperation with the South Korean authorities. The DPRK of sovereign country and of the victim cannot tolerate any false propaganda or criticism against it and the violation of human rights of Malaysia to conduct the second post-mortem on its citizen. As far as all the happenings clearly show that this incident is politicized by Malaysia in collusion with South Korea. We officially inform Malaysia and international community that we suggest the joint investigation on this incident for its clear clarification. If Malaysia agrees with our suggestion, we'll dispatch the lawyer's delegation, which means our determination to clarify this incident by the joint investigation with Malaysia, Malaysian police. In addition, sir, I can uh, tell you something. It was reported by the South Korean mass media on the death of, with other name by the DPRK agents after only one day the incident occurred in Malaysia. We are informed by the Malaysian police the next day, evening of, this, of his death. How it is, is it possible for South Korea to release the report on his death with other name before we know everything? This shows that the South, Korea, uh, South Korea is involved in this incident and Im implicates the fabrication by the South Korean conservative authorities for their escape from the political scandal. And they are desperate is to, to defame the image of the DPRK with this incident, spreading false propaganda through mass media. <clears throat> I remind you of, you, uh, uh, of the fact that his body was under the strict custody and protection by the Malaysian police. Malaysian side asks us to respect and abide by the Malaysian laws and regulations, and we, we respect them. But in the relations between the countries, the international customs and practices, including international laws and consular laws, are working. And based on this, the relations between the countries is maintained and developed. If each country holds fast, its own, uh, fast to its own laws, there will be no proper relations to be maintained and developed between countries. In this connection, I would like to ask Malaysia how it could uh, differentiate its behavior to exclude us on our citizens' death and to request us to abide by its own laws 
while aiming at the targeted investigation against us from that of the United States to force its internal laws to other countries. The Malaysian police spoke to the media without, without any uh, identification from the embassy that we confirmed his another name that we did not know at all. Moreover, the Deputy Prime Minister and Home Minister of Malaysia has told in an interview on 17th of February that she was reported by the police that our citizens of uh, another identity was confirmed by the embassy compared to the documents issued by us. That is completely baseless. In the morning on 18th February, we submitted the official document that we did not know any other name except Kim Chol as written in his passport to the Malaysian police site in the embassy. Then how could the Deputy Prime Minister make a false remark one day before our submission? This clearly suggests that Malaysia has a close tie with the South Korean plotter in this incident. When they could not get the desired result from the post-mortem, Malaysia announced that they would conduct the second one rather than handing over the body and the result of post-mortem to us. Their attempt to mangle again his body, not to release, is the culmination of a human rights violation and shows once again how they are desperate to shift blame to us on us. Last Friday night, the Malaysian plainclothes police raided the condominium of our citizen here in Kuala Lumpur and forcibly arrested him without any warrant or evidence and made it public that they arrested the mastermind of the incident before any form of inquiry began. They also aired on TV the scene that this said person was arrested in fetters. This is the grave human rights violation. Mm. They even pointed the guns to his family members to th uh, threaten their lives and beaten his teenage son in the face. This is the human rights abuse that can be seen only in, in the US gang film. Thank you. This is my whole comment. Thank you.